People around the world are captivated by Framing Britney Spears, a documentary that follows the young star's struggles at the mercy of toxic media coverage and the growing movement to free Britney from her conservatorship. Are women in the music industry more unfairly targeted by the media? And are there signs that this is changing? Evelyn McDonald is Professor of Journalism and New Media and Director of Journalism at Loyola Marymount University. She's an expert on music, gender and politics, a respected journalist and author. And we're so glad that you could join us. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. You have written and co-edited several books on women in music, including Queens of Noise, The Real Story of the Runaway. So how much of an eye opener is this documentary or is media scrutiny the price of fame? Well, I guess a little bit of both. Um, and you mentioned Queens of Noise, The uh, Real Story of the Runaways. So that was a book about a 1970s all girl teenage band from California whose most famous member uh, was Joan Jett, also Lita Forge, Rick Curry, um, went on to have fame, um, but this was their first musical effort. And as I write about in that book, what they went through was really horrible. The exploitation of the industry being presented as jailbait, um, uh, def definitely inappropriate sexual behavior and um, actually accusations of, of, of rape um, from their manager later emerged, um, not, in, not in my book, um, although, uh, I, I wrote around it. So, you know, this, this behavior has gone on for a long time. Um, Brittany was definitely a victim of it. And, you know, we knew some of that at the time, but the, the documentary definitely revealed more than we were aware of. Well, media coverage, positive or negative, has an impact on performers personally, but also on music history and public perception. So how has the media affected our appreciation of the contributions of women like Britney Spears, Whitney Houston, or The Runaways. Right. Um, so traditionally, um, the music media has not been great to these figures. Um, and we can particularly look at the example of Rolling Stone magazine, you know, which was really, um, you know, to its credit, the first great um, magazine about the music that came out of the 60s and survives to today. Um, and, is, and is actually, I think, um, back to being a pretty good magazine these days, um, but it has a very spotty record of how it's covered women, um, of very few women on the cover. If they're on the cover, they um, tend to be in slips. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the music magazines have followed that model, and there's actually been a lot of accusations of sexual harassment um, and uh, sexual discrimination, including lawsuits at many of the magazines, Spin Magazine, The Source Magazine, and certainly those accusations at, at Rolling Stone. Um, so, uh, and, 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 the, and the real problem is that then becomes institutionalized. Like women get left out of the record as they're making their work or they get poorly treated or they get treated as sex objects or, you know, Joni Mitchell, Rolling Stone famously would write about Joni Mitchell only in terms of her relationships with, you know, the famous rock stars that she did have, you know, some relationships with. Um, but really, they should have been writing about how those guys were having relationships with her. Like, she was, of course, the greatest artist of that era, of, of that scene. Um, you know, Britney, you, you know, is such a clear victim of all of this, particularly of the abuse by the tabloids, right? Um, and that's, you know, that's actually a, like a whole separate terrain from the music magazines. The sad thing is, is that women can't get respect even in the respectable publications, right? Maybe we don't expect it from National Enquirer, but we do respect it, expect it from Rolling Stone. So we look at the success of framing Britney Spears. Is it evidence of a greater cultural understanding of sexism, mental health, and power imbalances in the music industry? I mean, are we looking at celebrity through a new lens? And if so, how will that impact the industry? We are definitely looking at celebrity through a new lens and it's it's very heartening to see and we see it in music, we see it in this documentary, um, we see it in, in the movie industry, we see it in the, the Woody Allen Mia you know, Farrow um, series out right now. Um, and obviously we saw it with the, you know, the Time's Up and the Me Too movement, the exposés of Harvey Weinstein and, and many other figures. Um, this is the kind of behavior that was just rampant and accepted in the entertainment industry for you know, at least a century, for as long as there's really been an entertainment industry, really. Um, and, and it's 
and we've known about it, but it was just accepted, tolerated the price of doing business. And I, I think, I hope those days are coming to an end. I hope, hope this isn't just a um, temporary pushback. I, and I, I, I do feel like there's a title change. Um, and, I, and I hope that more women are getting into the positions of power to um, institutionalize that change. Well, after the doc made its debut, the apology started rolling in. Justin Timberlake, Sarah Silver, Silverman, rather, Perez Hilton among them. Do these apologies feel authentic or disingenuous? They feel very well written. <laughs> um, uh, I'm thinking particularly of the Justin Timberlake. Um, I'd rather have the apology than, than no apology. Um, I would also like to see uh, people like Justin Timberlake put their money where their mouth is um, and support women artists, um, figure out ways to make up for the damage that they have done. Um, and I'm sure that there are a, a lot of institutions that do support women artists that um, he could get behind, or if there's not, um, he could found one. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you know, he said the right things, uh, but also how many years has that been now for him to finally make that apology? It's pretty late. Quite a catalyst. Well, you actually did an analysis on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and found that under 10% of inductees are actually women. So nominations are more diversified in 2021, not parity, but maybe a step in the right direction. Do you think the industry is beginning to correct itself? Can it correct itself? Well, I was definitely heartened by the nominees that were announced a few weeks ago by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, uh, almost a quarter of them are women. And there's some really amazing women included that have never been nominated for. Of course, we have to see these women actually get inducted for the change to spec, but at least they've nominated more of them. I mean, seven, uh, no, I think it's up to it's less than 8% of inductees now are, uh, are um, women. And this includes all the members of bands, right? So, uh, and the real problem with that is that it becomes this perpetuating cycle because the inductees get to vote for future inductees. So the voting body skews male. It's, now it's not just inductees that vote and the hall of fame is not transparent about who all the voting body is. So we don't know what its gender makeup is. We do know that the nominating committee is heavily male, that the, um, the board of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is heavily male. But the fact that after actually 10 years of me um, doing this number crunching and pointing out how terrible the numbers are and that they kept getting worse, that they have made a course correction, they are under new leadership, um, I, I hope it's not just a temporary glitch. Um, I hope it moves forward. So in terms of social media, how powerful has this platform been in terms of giving celebrities more control over their image and their truth, and also giving consumers of their music a voice of what they want to see and hear in places like the Rock and Roll Hall of, Hall of Fame? I think it's been really important, right? So that if, if the gatekeepers of the music yeah, at places like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or Rolling Stone or the tabloids or um, television are not going to let women in or are not going to let them present themselves in the way they want to present them and are going to present them in um, ways that are um, demeaning um, and uh, psychologically damaging to them in the case of Britney Spears. That it's great for women to take control of their own image and their own following and to connect directly with fans. I think it, you know, this is one of the great things about the internet is it removes those barriers to participation for every average people. Of course, we also see negative effects of that as well. Um, I, and as a journalist, I would like some of those figures that use their social media so well, also talk to the news media because we need see them as fully rounded people, not just the image that they want to project. Um, so I think there should be a balance, but definitely it, it puts, it puts the artist in, in the driver's seat. 
Well, there's no question that social media certainly diluted the power of tabloid magazines and entertainment media. Evelyn McDonald, thank you so much for taking some time for Newspoint 360 today. We hope we can catch up to you after the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees are announced. Thank you so much.